Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the STEM Digital School. This is Grade 5 Natural Sciences and Technology. So guys, just before we start, please switch off your videos. Please switch off your videos. You can just switch them on at the end of the lesson when you say goodbye to each other. Ne? But right now, can they please be off? And even during the lesson, can your videos please be off? Okay, so guys, my name is Onkarabe Tefetswe, and I will be your teacher for Natural Sciences and Technology. I hope everyone is well and that you are keeping warm in this cold day. So guys, yesterday, yeah, we looked at meta and materials. We also looked at the uses of metals, right? So this is a topic under meta and materials. And we looked at uses of metals. So we are going to continue from yesterday's work. So I hope you guys just remember what we dealt with yesterday. Okay. So just a quick recap. We looked at special properties of metals. Okay, so this is a subtopic or subsection of the uses of metals. And we mentioned that not all metals are magnetic. And I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you guys remember which metals are magnetic or have magnetic properties? Do you guys remember which type of metals have magnetic properties? Okay, I see Sakura, your hand is up. So guys, yes, if you want to answer a question, you can raise your hand or you can alternatively just write your answer in the group chat. Okay, Sakura, I think I have unmuted you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ma'am, the most metals are usually iron, steel, yes. and... Um, <laughs> Ma'am, that's all I could remember. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you very much, Sakura. Okay, um, whose hand was also up? It went down now. Okay, but that is not... Oh, Yandisa, there we go. Yes, Yandisa. Ma'am. Yabo? Um, ma mostly magnetic properties are iron, steel, uh -huh. and oh, uh, what can I say? Iron, uh, and... metal. Yeah, that's all I have right now. That's all you have. Okay, no problem. I'll just remind you of the others. Okay. All right, so um, let me check the group chat if we have anything. Lissetti says um, he or she was not in class yesterday. Hey, Lissetti, it's, no, it's not a problem. So yesterday we we're just looking at metals and its magnetic properties. All right. So let us continue with our recap. We said magnetism is a very interesting property of some metals and iron cobalt and nickel are magnetic. So when we're looking at steel, steel um, is a form of a metal which is either mixed with iron all right, or nickel and that makes it magnetic. Okay, Malik says, you know things. Okay, Malik, what don't you understand? Okay, I see your hand is up. Let me just unmute you. Ma'am? Yeah, I don't understand what we're learning about. Oh, you don't understand what we're learning about. Okay. Yes, so you have your textbook in front of you. Uh, I'm going to take it out, ma'am. Just wait. Yes, ma'am. You have it in front of you. Cool. So yes, I will need you to go to the page or rather go to the table of contents. Check for meta and materials. Okay, ma'am. And then you have a subtopic which says uses of metals. Okay, Andisa, I'm sorry, your name is Nodi. <laughs> okay, um, I get that. And then Kopano says, my name is Nelly. All right. 
Okay, cool. I hope I remember your guys' names, but I'll try by all means. So, um, Malik, did you find it? Okay, Malik muted um, his mic again. So that is what we're looking at now. We add special properties of metals. Okay, so we're just recapping what we covered yesterday. Matter and materials, and then you look for uses of metals. Yes, Malik. Are you not getting it? Ma'am, what? No, ma'am. Meta and materials. Go to the table of hundreds. Yes, ma'am. And then look for. Um, this one meta. says. Yeah. This one says, um, topic six: metals and nonmetals. Metals and nonmetals. So just under metals and nonmetals, we have special properties of metals. Ma'am, I'm using the plat platinum textbook, Natural Science and Technology. All right, cool. So you can also just follow with that one. Yeah? Just look at the part where it speaks about the properties of metals. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go to page six. It's 62, ma'am. Okay. 62. Yes. Uh, ma'am, I found it. You found it. All right. So that it's is basically what... Yeah? It's properties of metals and it's many things we use in everyday life are made mm -hmm. from metals okay. we so use metals yesterday, yeah? yes ma'am okay so you now you can just follow with me okay so in your book okay, also just okay cool. beautiful thank you ma'am pleasure <clears throat> Um, Kate, your hand is up and I'm trying to unmute you, but it does not allow. So I think that mistake. But if you do have a question, oh, okay. Ma'am, what page is metal, metals and non-metals? Um, what textbook are you using? Day by day. Day by day. Yo, I do not know that, but go to the table of contents. Go to the table of contents, look under meta and materials. Uh, the table of contents is in front, no? it's in front of your book. Like just the first few pages, that's where you find your. Um, Table of contents. And then just look for matter and materials. You found it. Okay. So then look for metals and non metals or special uses of metals. Under matter and materials, now you should find that. And then you um, will get what we are talking about now we'll get the content that we're talking about. thank you ma'am all right cool okay guys let's continue with the lesson so i hope everyone is following you can guys you can also just follow within your textbooks okay so like i said guys ne, that iron cobalt and nickel are the only metals which are magnetic okay um i see Bill says Ma'am, which shop can I buy the platinum book? I do not know, guys, but the book that we are using in this lesson, you can get it online, all right? So let's just um, focus on this lesson. And if you guys need the textbook, then I'll also give you guys a link to get this particular textbook, okay? All right, so many appliances and tools are made of iron, making lots of the metal objects around us magnetic. Okay, then non-metals are not magnetic, and very much important to note. Okay, so guys, we are continuing with the special properties of metals. 
Yandisa, um, I would like you to write your question in the group chat, please. Yeah? Just please write your um, question in the group chat. Thank you very much. So special properties of metals, right? So we started with this topic yesterday, okay? And we looked at metals and magnetism. Okay, so this first bullet here, that is the one that we looked at yesterday. And today we will be doing metals and heat as well as metals and corrosion. Okay. So just um, a quick summary of metals and magnetism. We said that magnets attract other magnets and also certain metal objects. Remember those three metal objects that magnets attract is iron, cobalt, and nickel. Right, iron, cobalt, and nickel. Okay. Then we are moving on to metals and heat, and we will investigate other special properties of metals, which is conducting heat. So guys, just a quick question. Yeah? How is the food we eat cooked? How is the food we eat cooked? Okay, I see Fazel um, has his or her hand up. Let me just quickly unmute and hear. Ma'am. Yes. Yeah, this is Malik. No? Ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sure. We use, uh, how do we get our food home? It's by like the, the stove that heats uh -huh. it up by electrician, by electrician, yeah. and then it goes through the pot, electricity, and then it goes through the pot, and then it gets home. All right, beautiful. Thank you for that wonderful explanation. So I see in the group chat. Pleasure, ma'am. Lesedi says on a stove with heat. Thank you very much, Lesedi. Then Yandisa, ma'am, I do not have the textbook. Okay, I will send you the link, guys. If you need textbooks or the link to the textbook, I will send it after our lesson. All right. Koto says on a stove. That is also beautiful and correct. Um, Fazal, your hand is up, but I'm trying to unmute you. And it is not working. So, Fazel, you can just write your answer on the group chat for now. Okay. So, guys, we heat the outside of the pot. Just as explained by two of our fellow students, is that we get heat from the stove, right? Via electricity. Okay, Fazel, your uh, mic is unmuted. You're going to give us an answer. Okay, no problem. Okay, so guys, as I was saying that we heat the outside of our pot, then the food inside the pot would cook because um, metal is a conductor of heat. Yeah? The heat that cooks the food travels through the metal. Okay, so that is also the same way in which um, our food is warmed in or rather on the stove. Okay. And yes, if the food is cold for sale, or even if the food is just uncooked. All right. So it would have something like this happening, where the heat will come from the stove plate, which will move into the pot. From the outside of the pot, it will move into the food. Okay. So guys, just a quick activity where we would learn about the heat flow, or what we call thermal conductivity, okay? Thermal conductivity. So you guys would have electricity on the stove, then the electricity will be turned to heat energy, okay? We'll turn it to heat energy and the heat will move from the stove plate into the pot. Okay, so the materials that we're going to need for this um, activity or investigation is a container or one liter yogurt tube bottle or a two liter ice cream container. We're gonna need warm water, not boiling water, just warm. Then we're also gonna need ice cold water. We're gonna need a metal spoon. We're gonna need a plastic spoon as well as a wooden spoon. Okay, and then instructions are as follows. Quick and simple. Fill the container with warm water. Place the spoons in the hot water so that their handles 
um, are above the surface of the water as in the image that is about to appear. So this is basically what you guys need to do for this experiment. And after this lesson, you guys can actually just try it at home. I believe it's very much safe and you guys will be careful with this. Yeah? So you need um, a metal spoon, a plastic spoon, as well as a wooden spoon. Okay, so we're gonna leave them, we're gonna leave the spoons in the water for about 15 counts or 15 seconds. Then we feel the handles of each of the spoons in turn. Yeah? Which spoon feels the warmest? Then we need to write our answer below. And in this case, the metal spoon would feel the warmest. Okay, then we move on to um, instruction number five, which says we need to empty the container and rinse the spoons under the cold tap, then fill the container with ice cold water, then place the spoons in the ice cold water so that their handles are above the surface of the water. And we're gonna leave them there for about 15 counts and fill the handles of each spoon in turn. And question is, which spoon would feel the coldest? And we would need to write it down. And the spoon which would feel the coldest is also the metal um, spoon. Okay, so questions guys, just uh, for this activity. Did the metal spoon feel warm after it had been standing in the warm water? So guys, this was given to you. I just answered the question for you in the above or rather in the previous slide. So you guys can just write down um, your answers in the group chat or alternatively raise your hand. Okay. Um, um the the metal spoon um 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 did feel feel warm after uh, after heating it up in the pot. Putting it in the warm water, yeah? Remember we're not heating anything, the water was just warm. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. All right, beautiful. Okay, um, Lissedi says yes, ma'am, and they will also say yes, ma'am, and Sakura also see you there. Koso also says yes. All right, let's see if, and indeed the answer is yes, it felt, or rather it was the warmest of all three spoons. Okay, Sintando, I see your, your, your answer as well. Next question, where did the heat that you felt on your fingers, right? This is if you actually did the experiment. Where did this heat come from? Where did the heat that you feel come from? So remember, girl, we said that the spoon felt warm. So where did this heat come from? Uh, CPO says it came from the metal spoon. All right. Okay, Zakura, your hand is up. Fizel, um, I'm trying to unmute your mic, but you are not um, responding. Sakura? Ma'am, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ma'am, the heat came from the water, ma'am. The um, metal spoon came from that heat very well. So then the heat went up to the spoon and... All right, beautiful. Thank you very much. So um, I think I read those answers. Say that it is from the metal spoon. And uh, Lissedi also said from the metal spoon. Tando says the heat comes from the warm water or hot water and then also says inside the bottle. Okay, let us see. So the heat came from the hot water or the warm water. All right, just as Sakura just mentioned that um, metal is a good conductor of heat. All right, so metals are good conductors of heat and hence we felt that warm feeling on our fingers okay, or on our hand. Next question, how did the heat reach your fingers? How did the heat reach your fingers? And Lisa says, um, from the warm water to the metal spoon. All right, do you have any other answer? How did the heat reach your fingers? Interesting. Okay, Sakura's hand is up. Um, okay, Shete, I also see your hand. I'll just take your answer now. Um, I... 
I think, ma'am, that our fingers can also conduct heat, ma'am. Our bodies can also conduct heat, ma'am. We can feel the heat, and we then we, if whatever we touch can also be a little bit of warm. Oh, beautiful. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, here, here. By the steam. By the steam. That's how we felt the 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 um the heat reaching our fingers. Man. All right. Thank you very much, Lefe. Thank you, man. Sure. Yes, I see. Um, we also very much busy here on the group chat. Let's see the answers that we have on the group chat. Um, Bill says when you touch the metal spoon, Dando says from from warm water to the spoon or from the spoon to my hands. The city says when you touched it. Potter says from the steam inside the bottle. Let's see the answer. So guys, heat traveled or moved through the metal spoon to our fingers or our hands. So just as um, Sakura mentioned, I believe it was Sakura who said that our bodies can also conduct heat. And that is correct, guys. So the heat traveled from the metal spoon to the to our bodies or our finger or our hand. Yeah? So remember this heat, it, it was in the warm water or the hot water. Then it went to the metal spoon. From the metal spoon, we felt it on our hands or on our fingers. All right. Beautiful. Okay, next question. It says complete the sentence. Yeah? Write the sentence out in full. So the sentence reads as follows. The spoon feels hot because heat flows from, and then there's an open space. Malik, your um, video is on. Thank you. Heat flows from mm to mm. Just fill in the missing words. Okay. Yes, Sakura, I see your hand. Yanji, I also see your hand. And Able. The spoon feels hot because it flows from the water to the spoon. Beautiful. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Andisa. Ma'am, the mm -hmm. spoon feels hot because the the heat the um the water um flows from the heat from the water flows to the spoon. Okay, let's do that again, Yandisa. Remember the sentence is the spoon feels hot because heat flows from mm to mm. Okay, so we're not just fill in the missing spaces there. Let's take it again. The spoon feels hot because heat flows from the from water to to the spoon. All right, thank you very much. Beautiful. Okay. Right, so let us see the answer. And yes, guys, Sankura and Yandisa, you were correct. From the water to the wait, 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 guys. So is the spoon feels hot because heat flows from the water to the spoon, and not my hand. Ne? I made a mistake there. That is my error, is to the spoon. Okay. So Sankura and Yandisa, you guys were correct. Gazelle, your hand is up, but every time I try to unmute you, um, it actually takes, you need to accept to be unmuted, ne? Okay, Gazelle, there we go. Mm, there's no sound coming from you, all right? So I think you'd need to use um, the group chat. Okay, Bazel, there's no sound coming from your side. Just use um, the group chat. So yes, guys, um, the part to my hand is an error. Okay, that is my mistake. It's supposed to be the spoon, the spoon. Okay. Then next question, did the metal spoon feel cold after it had been standing in the ice cold water? Did the metal spoon feel cold after it had been standing in 
ice cold water. Yes, yeah, Yipeu says it did. Yandisa? Ma'am, um, yes, it did because after, because the, 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 the ice is very cold, so the coldness affected the spoon. Mm -hmm. Very much beautiful. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, ma'am, it did because of the cold water was so cold. All right, beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay, so let us see the answer. I see Koto also used the group chat in Dando, Brazil, and he said they said it felt cold, right? So yes, it did feel cold and it, oh my goodness, spelling errors. It was the coldest of the three spoons. Okay, not the warmest, the coldest, right? Then question six, where did the cold that you felt with your fingers come from? Where did the cold? that you felt with your fingers or your hand come from? So guys, we can use the group chat because this is a quick question, right? It's a quick answer rather. We need a quick answer from the water, the ice cold water. Thank you, Koto. And yes, it came from the cold water. Okay, then question seven. How did the cold reach your fingers? How did the cold reach your fingers? Okay, Fazel, just check your mic, okay? I am going to try to unmute you and let's see if it works this time. Okay, Fazel, you're unmuted. Okay, Fazel, we cannot hear you, so um, I think you will need to use the group chat, okay? The sound is not working properly. Okay, so um, I see you say the MC says it came from the ice water, from the water, that's the Zale, and Dando also says from the cold, Dando says from the cold spoon, he said he says from the cold spoon. Okay, I think I read um, the above answers from the above question. Okay, yes, I see your answers, guys. So heat flows from my fingers into the cold spoon, so that is why the fingers feel cold. So it is from the spoon. And that is correct, guys. So the cold came from the spoon. Okay. All right. And we have another question which says, complete the sentence. Write the sentence out in full. The spoon feels cold because heat flows from the to the. Okay, so I see Shesha, your hand is up and I'll give this question to you. Okay. All right, so she's taking time to unmute. Yandisa, let's see. Ma'am, the sentence is the, um, the spoon feels cold because heat flows from the, from the water to of heat. Okay, guys, so very much important that metals can conduct heat. It's metal, metal, yes, it is metal. Okay. Right. So, guys, metals are usually shiny. Okay, now we're moving to the second um, special
iron corrodes. And I think we still have a few points there. So we say iron reacts with oxygen in the air or water to form iron oxide. And this iron oxide is what we call a rust and it's a reddish brownish color. Okay, so um, other parts where we can see this um, corrosion happening is the steel gates or the iron gates, which are outside, okay? So they can also just form this reddish or brownish color, okay? Please, Sakura, your hand is up, okay? Ma'am. Yeah, some, some metals can also not rust, ma'am. Like some metals go and rust. Okay, metals like what? Ma'am, like steel, ma'am. Like steel. Okay, no, steel can rust, ne? Okay. <laughs> okay. But I, I just, I'll, I'll give you homework, then, eh? Just go find out for me which metals cannot rust. Okay, then we'll look at it tomorrow. Okay, Sakura, I hope you heard that. That please go find out for me which metals do not rust. And then we'll just share with the class tomorrow. Then I see. Because it says here, which is found on copper objects. Okay. And then just a quick question. Can you guys think of ways to protect iron against rust? Can you guys think of ways to protect iron against rust? Even if it's one way, I see Sakura's hand is up. Let's see. Yeah. Man, by coating it by paint or other metals. Okay, so by coating it with paint or other metals. All right, beautiful. Okay, so does anyone else have an answer? Okay, um, I think we have a question. Yandisa says, what does corrodes mean? So basically to corrode is when a metal, right, gets destroyed or damaged by a chemical reaction. Okay, so this is when a chemical reaction is taking place. It's a gradual process. It, does, it just doesn't happen fast. It's gradual and slow. Okay, so it means that the metal is becoming damaged or destroyed via a chemical process. Right, so that is what corroding or corrosion refers to. Okay, Poto says, do not put it on rain. And Sankura added on and says, do not put it near water because we might have that chemical reaction happening. So I see Lucetti also saying, polishing it every week or month. And that is correct. And here we have a picture of how um, these two ladies are trying to protect that metal from, um, or rather protecting the iron from rusting by putting on paint, okay. So thank you very much. Okay, so guys, another activity, which um, it reads as follows. How can dirty copper coins be cleaned? How can dirty copper coins be cleaned? So guys, I'm sure you have seen um, coins, right? <laughs> okay, obviously you have. You have seen coins, right? And some coins are shiny, others are dull. You know, the, 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 the color usually differs. Okay, so in this activity or investigation, we are just going to um, see how we can clean these copper coins. Okay, Sankara, I see your hand is up. I believe you are giving me an answer as to how we can clean dirty copper coins. Okay, I'm just going to take one hand because we have a few minutes left. Okay, Sakura. Ma'am, you can mm -hmm. put the coin. You can put the coin in vinegar and put mm -hmm. in some baking soda and then you can leave it in there for a little while or you can take okay. a aluminum foil and 
rapid into vanilla and just wrap the object and then wrap the with smooth with the smooth surface afterwards. All right, beautiful Sakura. So guys, I hope you heard what Sakura said. Okay. Excuse me for that, Amanda. So guys, for this activity, the materials that we are utilizing is 20 dull or dirty copper coins. They do not need to be 20. You can even use two or five, okay? Depending on how many we have. And then we're gonna need a, a quarter cup of white vinegar, one teaspoon of salt, a clear and shallow bowl, and we're gonna need paper towels, tissues, or a sheet of a paper, okay? All right, so the instructions are as follows. Um, Sankura already told us that we can use the vinegar and salt, and he also gave us various other methods that we can use to clean our copper coins. So we put the salt and vinegar in the bowl and stir until the salt dissolves. We're gonna dip one of the coins halfway um, into the liquid, then hold it for about 10 seconds, then pull it out. Okay, then we're gonna place all the coins into the liquid and watch how they change um, for, a, for the first few seconds. Okay, and then after five minutes, oh, sorry, Sakura, um, excuse me for that, please. Then after five minutes, we're gonna take half of the coins out of the liquid. So guys, this is basically what we'll be doing. Put your salt and vinegar into a bowl and then dip in your coins, right? and actually see how these um, coins get cleaned. So what we will see is our D4, right? The coin would have looked like that. And after, this is how the coin looked like, okay? So guys, um, Sakura also mentioned né, that we can use bicarbonate of soda, that is your baking soda. So even with pots, you can clean your pots with um, bicarbonate of soda or use salt and vinegar to just get them to be in a shiny state, okay? So guys, we have covered the special properties of metals, which is metals and magnetism. We have seen that metals are good conductors of heat. And we also have noted that metals can corrode, all right? So metals and corrosion, metals and heat, metals and magnetism. Just um, again, guys, this is under matter and materials in your different textbooks. Okay. Um, I see Sakura, I think you have a question or a comment. Let me just unmute you quickly. Ma'am, another way, other objects can get rusty by, um, can get rusted by um, whenever we wash it, sometimes we, we scratch the surface and then these brown things get on it. So then it looks like it's getting rusty. All right, so it gets damaged as well, all right? Okay, thank you very much, Sakura, for that um, addition. Okay, so guys, this brings us to the end of our lesson. So, um, you guys said that you need a link to this textbook that I'm using. I'm just quickly going to put, or rather, guys, just go on the internet ne? and type grade five natural sciences and technology. I'm just writing it in the group chat right now. And this is the textbook that I have been using in this lesson, okay? So if you need the textbook, you can just type this on Google, Natural Sciences and Technology, and go to Thunderbolt Kids, okay? The Thunderbolt Kids website. And this is where you're gonna get hold of this particular textbook that I am using for the lessons. Okay, so you can just use that textbook as well. And you can also just follow from your guys' textbook if there are things that I cover in this textbook which are not present in your textbook, just add on, okay? And guys, thank you, thank you very much for joining in the lesson. Thank you for participating. I hope you guys learned something. If you do have any questions, just um, send through your queries to stemdigitalschool at africateengeeks.co.za. Or if you guys um, have a question for me or request for slides, you can just um, send me an email on onkarabete.sitzwe at gmail.com. 
Okay, guys, thank you very much. Enjoy your day further. Goodbye.